Good morning, friends. Merry Christmas. To those of you joining us live streaming, welcome. We are very pleased that we can come together and worship. You already have a sense of the tone of this service. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be very musical. Those of you who know, we have a fondness for Matthew bringing George Winston's December. And so they're selected portions of that album that's part of this worship service. We're going to be just reflecting this morning on the wonder and the joy of Christmas Day. So please that those of you joining us live streaming are with us. You will find the bulletin online. Uh, It is an aid to worship. If you have difficulty calling it up while you watch us, that's perfectly fine. We prompt everything through the whole service. As I've already mentioned, Matthew is here, and at least half of this service is simply the music. And then we're going to be focusing on what you see in front of me here. This is a wonderful nativity scene that was donated to the church, and I'll move the um, stand in a moment so people can see it better. It's a beautifully handmade uh, nativity scene, and I want to focus particularly on the Holy Family. We're going to reflect on them this morning. You see a phone number in front of me, 843-437-4239. That's for our ministry of prayer. Please feel free to text names that you would like to have lifted up in prayer when we come to that point in the service. I will note that a live stream from my phone, which is much faster in responding to texts, I use the iPad, which is through our network, and it's slower. So... Text names earlier in the service so they're sure to arrive in time for the prayer. Simply noting this is in many ways kind of a quiet week between Christmas Day and then next week, New Year's Day. And we'll do the same on New Year's Day, which is a single 10 a.m. service. Uh, For those who have come, there is coffee and a few refreshments set up in the fellowship hall. Feel free afterwards to go back and share with each other and just share the joy of this day. The men's prayer breakfast will meet this Tuesday morning, 7.30 a.m. as usual. Well, friends, technology allows us to share worship in real time. Let us greet one another in spirit. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Amen. The word was made flesh and pitched a tent among us, not a temple, not a palace, but a tent pitched among us, eating our bread, sharing our laughs, crying our tears. God is here with us, our Emmanuel. You may be seated.
Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His breath. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory. marvelous gift. It will not surprise you to know that for now, more years than Ron wants to count, he has uh, shared his passion and his talent for music. Thank you. It was a perfect fit for this morning. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, friends, as we come into this sacred and holy time and space, We open ourselves before God, and an important part of that is being honest and humbling ourselves. The purpose for our confession is to receive the forgiveness that God so graciously offers. So first, in one voice together, and then in silent reflection, let us open ourselves fully before God in order to receive the gracious mercy that God freely extends. In one voice, let us pray together. God, in all generations, you have brought light into darkness. As a pillar of fire, you gave guidance. From a burning bush, you proclaimed deliverance. In Christ, you shed the light of mercy over all the earth. We confess that like shepherds, We are fearful of the brightness of your glory. We find the vision of your majesty too much to bear. In your sublime presence, we stand revealed. Our reluctance to love, our fear of being loved, our need of mercy, and our refusal to serve all stand exposed. We are seen plainly, we are seen plainly as we are. Sinners, lost, those sitting in darkness, forgive our fear of your glory. Teach us to welcome the light and live in the peace by which you would bless all people.
friends, hear and receive the wondrous news. For it is in Christ Jesus that we are forgiven. Amen. Alleluia. First scripture lesson from the prophet Isaiah speaks about a light to the nations. If there is any theme here in the Christmas season, especially we hear at Christmas Eve, it is the presence of the light coming into the world, pushing back against that encroaching darkness. On Christmas Eve, we close the service holding candles dim the lights in the sanctuary and there's that glow of candlelight the flicker and we know that it's very very tenuous if you step outdoors into the breeze it's extinguished but the light that is in the world the light that is coming into the world is present and the difference it makes has been profound the prophet Isaiah speaks about both the hope and the promise of a light that all the nations need and desire. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. 
For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. God says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
On Christmas Eve, we here recounted the glorious story of the birth of Christ and the witness around the stable. This morning, taking us to a few days shortly following that event, the time when the family returns and goes to Jerusalem in order for to be done at the temple that which should be done. And you'll hear in that unfolding the vision as well as the commissioning, still a surprise to the parents of Jesus, to Mary and then, of course, Joseph as well. Gospel of Luke, beginning with the 22nd verse of the second chapter. When the time came for their purification during the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us bow together in prayer. Lord, now still in us all voices but your own, help us to listen, to hear, and to embrace what you want to teach us this day. Bless us with a reverent sense of your presence that we may be at peace. Encourage us to worship you with our whole body, mind, and spirit. Then send us out into the world, a people renewed and empowered for service. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. As I've mentioned, the theme of light shining in the darkness is at the very heart of the Christmas story. And what I'd like you to do right now, if you would, turn in your bulletin to the prayer of confession because it contained the imagery of that light pushing back against the darkness. Secondly, it speaks about how that represents God's presence in our very midst. And thirdly, it is a commissioning of who and whose we are. If you'll notice as the confession opens, It's an acknowledgement that across the generations, God has brought light into darkness. The reality of the world we live in, we know, is by imagery, metaphorically, their sense of the darkness pressing in. The feeling as if the things that God intends are not as they ought to be, and that the world is both troubled, filled with hardship, with anger, with violence, And we wonder as we look around, where is God in the midst of this? And the answer is, God is very present. Where are we in responding to God's presence? And then there's a reminder of the ways in which God has been present. Last night I referenced how the people of Israel had a constant reminder in the desert that God was in their midst. Not only was there the Ark of the Covenant, but they saw in the midst of their encampment either a pillar of smoke or a pillar of fire. At night, the pillar of fire, light pressing back against the darkness. Or the imagery of the burning bush. 
catching Moses' attention, but also a witness to God's presence as Moses is commissioned. And then, as we've noted, how powerful that image of the light coming into the world. In the Gospel according to John, and John gets exceedingly philosophical in his language, the imagery, but it's that light pushing back against the darkness. And it's a constant reminder of two things, how tenuous the light appears to be and how strong it is in spite of what appears to be the power of the darkness. And so throughout our confession, we are reminded of how light represents God's love in our midst. I mentioned that I was going to move the lectern a bit so you would have that opportunity to see this nativity scene, which is a very special gift given to the church a number of years ago. The person who had it, had it in their home and said, you know, it's simply too large to be set up in a house. It belongs in a sanctuary. And so it's just an absolutely wonderful gift, but also it's rather fragile. So if you were here or watched the four o'clock service, you'll notice that I brought the robust nativity scene from the narthex in here. I did not put this one out because little hands do want to pick up and hold things. And unfortunately, this is too fragile for that. So I don't want to scold. I don't want to push them aside. But you can hang on to the larger nativity scene. And by the way, they did. So it was wonderful. So you'll see gathered around, and I'm going to shift back and forth so that everyone in the sanctuary has that chance to see sanctuary has that chance to see the nativity. You will see all the witness gathered around Mary, Joseph, and the baby in the manger. And in this scene, Joseph is actually holding a lamp, already carrying that light. Again and again, we have that representation of the light gathering darkness, because, of course, that's in the middle of the night. What I'd like us to do is move from the biblical images of God's presence represented by light and move into our own lives. And to recognize that that imagery of light is a way in which we show God's love. You've heard the phrase, you can light up someone's life. I mean, we have a lot of imagery, both about light, but also the ways in which we show and demonstrate love. The kinder, the quieter, the subtler it is, the more powerful. You know, it's that smile to a stranger. You know what I'm talking about. In the middle of a hectic day, you see someone who looks very stressed and you just simply give that gentle look. The power of kindness is profound. Far too often, we think you have to do something dramatic to make a difference in someone's life. You don't. Matthew is going to shortly play a piece. It's entitled, Some Children See Him. And the imagery there is that with open eyes and open hearts, we recognize things that are all around us. Life gets very busy, and this has been a very hectic season, and it's easy for us to simply miss what's all around us. Those of you who have gathered here this morning have come in the quiet of a Christmas morning. Those of you joining us live streaming have taken a pause in the midst of what can be a busy day. And in that pause, we open our hearts and our ears and our eyes and begin to recognize That God has given us a remarkable gift. 
God has come into the world and been one with us. Last night I used an image. It's one of my favorite stories. I'm sure it happened. And it's one that clergy sort of gather. And the story goes like this. It's a very young child. Wakes up. Scared in the middle of the night. Cries out. And one of the parents comes to the child. And sits in the bedroom a while. Calming the child. And then is ready to go back to bed. And the child continues to be afraid. And so the parent says. I think the child's about five years old. Goes. Well that, you're not going to be alone. You know. God is with you. Always with you. And the child is only. A young child would say. Yes. But I'd like to have someone with some flesh on them. What we celebrate. In the coming of Christ. Is that God's presence. Had flesh on it. We've talked about the imagery of light. Of seeing God represented in a variety of ways. But the power of the message of Christmas morning is that God came into the world and joined us. The disciples could reach out and touch him. And what we continually affirm is that God continues to be present in a real and a tangible way. But the flesh that God has in the world now, you and me. We're the hands of Christ. We're Christ's feet. We're the heart of Christ. Where we go as Christians, we bear the very witness of our Savior. So it is in our face, in our smile, in the things that we do, that does show the love of Christ present each and every moment in the world. Open our eyes and we too can see Christ in our midst. Amen.
as we enter into our ministry of prayer, invite those who wish to have me lift names up to text them to me. Those that are present here, you may speak names, and as always, we can lift them from the silence of our hearts. Let's bow together in prayer. Most holy and gracious God, on this morning especially, we give you thanks for a love that reaches out and draws us close, claims us, holds us. We give thanks for the wonder of this day, for the gift of your Son, for all that he has meant to us. We turn to you in prayer. And in the stillness of this morning, we lift to you the needs of the world. The list itself is overwhelming. When we begin to consider all the needs, it's far too easy for us to fall into despair. As we turn to you in prayer, we ask first that you inspire us that you guide us, showing us how each and every one of us can make a difference. Remind us that you will weave all of our efforts together so our prayers reach out to the many needs of the world. And we ask that you show us how we might help. Much closer to home, we lift to you those we do know whose needs we know all too well and who are in need of the care, comfort, and strength that flows from, strength that flows from you. Pray for Jim Curley, for Ken Hitchcock, Carol Walters, Sherry Shannon, Tim and Joe Coughlin. May each and every person whose name has been spoken or lifted from the silence of our hearts know the love, the strength, the care that flows from you. May they feel that strength. May they rely on your grace and love. Now we offer this prayer in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, the blessings of God are incredible. The gift of life, the people that God has placed in our lives, the resources God has entrusted to us. May we now at this time continue worshiping God as we present our gifts, our offerings, and our tithes.
Most gracious God, receive these gifts as tokens of our devotion. Here and now we rededicate our lives in service to the risen Lord. Show us how you would have us serve you this day and this coming year. And now, in full trust and confidence, we make this dedication in the name of the one who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, now go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. And help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>